Well, we are done with Leviticus, and we are into our, our new uh, sermon series here for October. The harvest is plentiful, and soon it will feel like fall today, but I think like Tuesday, we're supposed to be back into fall mode, and so that will be uh, super great, because then all of this will feel appropriate. Today, it feels like maybe it's not quite fall yet. Uh, but we're going to talk about the harvest is plentiful for a few weeks here together. And today we're going to talk about sowing the seeds of faith. Uh, a quick reading here from, from Galatians. The Apostle Paul writes to one of his churches, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh from their flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good. This is the word of the Lord, and so this is sort of what we're going to be talking about this morning, is what it means then to sow, to sow seeds of faith. Before we get to that, this is uh, probably impossible for you to read, uh, so I will explain what we're, what we're looking at. It's, I can read it perfectly. It's, well, if you can't, uh, you know, but <laughs> so Google is this you know, search engine that basically everyone goes and Google now owns the earth. I think we actually, Google is our president at this point, maybe. And so Google uh, runs everything. And so what this is, is you can go to Google and assuming that Google is being truthful, they are showing us what, uh, this is a list of the top five searches for this past uh, week, the past seven days. And I kind of waited till yesterday to take this, so... If something happened uh, sometime yesterday evening, then this is out of date already. But uh, so the first thing we have, hurricane, the hurricane thing, right? So the hurricane is happening, and so that's the number one, the number one search. Uh, Maggie Smith. So Maggie Smith is from Harry Potter, an actress, and she uh, passed away uh, this week. And so Maggie Smith is high up. Carl Anthony Towns. Uh, Knicks, it says Knicks, that's a, is that a basketball player? Okay, See, I know stuff. Lake Lure Dam, so the, in uh, North Carolina, there's this thing, and so there may be more news on Lake Lure Dam since I've, Cowboys versus Giants. So anyway, this is a, a list of the trending Google searches for the, for the past week. I show you this so I can then show you this picture, which is one search term that is pretty... No one really cares about it. There's a few. There's a lot of people in the world. And so there's a few people kind of all look, searching for this. But then all of a sudden, like one day, this thing goes to the top of the scale. From basically the bottom of the scale, this thing goes to the top of the scale. And it's, you can't really see the date there, but it's around April of last year. Around April 8th of last year. And if you think back, around this time, there was a solar eclipse happening. And so there's one specific search term that everyone was Googling around the time of the solar eclipse. And you will never guess what it is. Why do my eyes hurt? That's, this is real. Why do, why do my eyes hurt? Right, you know? And so this is how we then get into you reap what you sow. Your eyes hurt. And we all know why these people were concerned that day specifically about, about uh, why, why their eyes hurt. Because you, you reap what you sow. And it's always fun to me to read through the Bible and find these phrases that are sort of common Phrases in, in English or obviously then throughout the world, this you reap what you sow phrase. And so it at least dates back as far as, you know, 40 AD. This saying has been around. It's probably been around then a lot longer. Sometimes you will find uh, phrases in the Bible that, you know, the Bible is where we first hear this term and this phrase that has become sort of common parlance here throughout in normal everyday language, but you reap what you sow goes all the way at least back to here, Paul writing to the Galatians, and most likely, right, Paul knew that because he heard someone else say it, but you reap uh, what you sow. 
A man reaps what he sows. That's what we read here uh, from the Apostle Paul. And what this means is our time, our actions, our uh, words, our attitudes, our intentions uh, are precious. And they're precious. uh, One reason they're precious is because they're limited, especially our our time and our actions. We only have, there there only are so many hours in a day. uh, And hopefully we get to sleep some of those. So, you know, there's a big chunk right away. And so we only have kind of so much time throughout any given day to spend some of this resource, to spend some of our time, our actions, our words, our attitudes. We only have so much time for all of these things. They're limited resources uh, from a, a day-to-day, uh, day-to-day standpoint. They're limited. And so the way that we spend this resource we have, this time every day, at least on this side of the resurrection, is that we have an opportunity to spend it uh, positively or we have an opportunity to spend it negatively. We can, as Galatians would say, continue to do good in the way that Paul and Jesus would invite us to do good. Our attitudes can be uh, positive or negative. Our actions and our words then also can be positive or negative. We have this bag of seeds, I'm going to call them. This is a, a, a word I have to use today. And am I going to use this in a positive way or am I going to use this in a negative way? And then as I go through my day, here's, you know, I'm reaching into my limited bag of actions and words and attitude and perspectives. And I decide how am I going to sow this thing? Is this a seed that is going to be used for good? Or is this a seed that's going to be used for not good in a, in a negative way? And so we have this choice, whether we recognize it or not. And hopefully uh, today then we are recognizing that we have a choice of how our time and attention, our intentions are used positively or negatively. And so Paul continues and he, and to go and, and says, whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. And Paul sets up for, this, for us this decision. Um, the way he puts it is to sow to the spirit uh, or to sow to the flesh. And so this dichotomy, this sort of one versus the other, uh, sets up then in our mind the idea that flesh is bad and spirit is good. We have this flesh versus spirit. And when we live in that reality that flesh is bad and spirit is good, I'm confusing myself, flesh is bad and spirit is good, When we live in this reality, then we start to get confused a little bit. Uh, We start to, there begins to be anxiety about who Jesus was. Because we agree that Jesus was truly human and truly divine. Which means he was fully a flesh and fully spirit. And so then does that mean that Jesus was half bad and half good? Because he was half, or fully, I guess, fully bad and fully good. Uh, I'm already confusing myself. You see the problem, the problem we get into. Because we've set this thing up, partly because of how Paul t- uh, talks, and partly because of then the way that we uh, live this in our daily lives is, it, lives is spirit good, flesh bad. So then the most spiritual and holy person among us is the one that disregards their flesh the most and regards the spirit the most. And we're stuck then in trying to live a life outside of this meat suit thing that we walk around in. It's like we say, we are just spirits and, you know, we have to be in this meat suit, but as soon as we can, I'm going to get out of this thing because it's not good or something because of, of this. But what Paul is trying to get across is, Our bodies are not bad and our 
spirit is good. What Paul is actually trying to help us understand is that we, our actions, our time and attentions, our words and our attitudes are part of our flesh and our spirit. We sow spiritual fruit with our body. We have no other way to spread the love of Jesus. We have no other way to live a life in the spirit other than in the meat suit. This is, this is what we have to do this. And so as soon as we decide we don't need to worry about what's happening here in, the, in, our, in our body, then we're left with, well, then how do I live a life in the spirit? How do I sow spiritual seeds? Uh, because I have to leave this body behind and it's just a, it's a, it's a mess. What Paul is getting to, when Paul uses the word flesh, he means positive versus negative. If we, in, in the way Paul is using the word flesh is, we have this sin problem that we all have. And if we have this sin problem, which we all do, then we can either sow seeds into this sin problem that we all have, or we can sow seeds into the salvation gift that we have. We can sow seeds of sin, or we can sow seeds of grace. Flesh for Paul is another way for him to talk about sin. It's not a way for him to talk about the, the uh, meat suit that we're wearing. It's a way for him to distinguish between uh, what is sinful and then what ultimately uh, glorifies God. Ultimately, how do we degradate the gift that God has given us with our humanness? Or how do we honor God with the gift of humanness that God has given us? Jesus was fully human and fully divine. We live in that reality that our bodies are good. Our bodies are good because these are the only thing we have to interact uh, with others around us. And so we get to decide if that interaction is sown for good, or we get to decide if that interaction is uh, sown for sin. And ultimately then, what you care for the most, where you spend your time, attention, words, and attitudes the most, that's sort of what flourishes in your life. If you've ever had a garden, or many of us in the room have gigantic fields of gardens, <laughs> you know that you need to spend your time, attention, your resources, your money, uh, all of these things in a very particular and specific way. Because if you neglect them and you decide instead of uh, doing the thing that needs to happen today in this process, I'm going to uh, watch four hours of Pee Wee's Playhouse in a row, then you, you are deciding where you are uh, spending your resources. You have a say a little bit here in how your spiritual life flourishes versus how your sin life flourishes, for lack of a better word than that. You have a say then in how you spend these resources, what you sow and what you take care of, what you manage. And so we have options available to us of Ways that we can sow, as Paul would say, sow in the spirit. And I would say, and I think Paul would agree with me, when we say sow in the spirit, it's how do we spend our time and attention and our resources into this relationship uh, that Jesus has offered us? It's not a, just a disembodied spirit world that we're thinking of. Sowing in the spirit means sowing into this relationship with God. God created us for a relationship with him. And so these are ways that we can cultivate that. Our time, actions, words, and attitudes are precious, and they're limited. So we have a choice 
uh, all throughout the day, every day of how we spend them. Ways that we can sow then into this relationship is we can come here to worship on Sunday mornings. Check, but we're doing the thing right here to, uh, this morning together. We're sowing in, into this relationship. We're spending our time and attention uh, this morning in a, in a very specific way. Part of it is our relationship uh, with each other. And part of it is our relationship with our Father in heaven. If you're here, you understand the importance of both of those things. And you understand that when you cultivate this part of your routine on a weekly basis, it sets you up for a better week every time. If you make the time to cultivate this relationship, it will continue to grow and flourish. Another way that we can uh, sow seeds into this relationship is following a, a Bible reading plan. Sometimes people will say, well, you know, it, it becomes rote or it becomes not meaningful if you're set aside a specific time and you go through a plan and you're not doing it out of the love and joy of your heart alone. Some days you don't want to go into the field. Some days you, you don't want to go to church. Some days I don't want to weed my garden. But if I use my uh, body here to cultivate that, despite the fact that maybe it's not my heart's desire in that moment, that doesn't mean that that growth still doesn't happen. That doesn't mean that even though I may wake up in the morning and say, well, I'm really busy today and I just don't have time because I got to go watch YouTube or whatever I, I waste my time on. Uh, I don't have time uh, for this today. And if I lean into the spirit, if I follow the Holy Spirit's promise, I say, you, 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 you do have time. And I do this even though maybe I'd rather watch YouTube. That relationship is, is still deepening. Yes, it would be great if Every intention of our hearts was, was pure and, and pointed towards a relationship with the Lord. But sometimes it's not. And sometimes then we use our bodies in a way that is disciplining them to continue this relationship even if we don't feel like it that day. So we can come to worship on Sunday mornings. We can follow a Bible reading plan. If you're uh, someone that struggles to read the Bible, maybe that's not the easiest thing for you. I will say this, if you're someone that kind of struggles to get into that, come talk to me. And we can find a, a, a translation that works and a plan that works and a rhythm that feels natural to you. Not everyone does it the same way. Not everyone has the same rhythms and not everyone's relationship with the Lord and the relationship then with the Bible looks the same. And that's okay. Our relationships are specific and unique and precious then. And so we can come to worship on Sunday morning. We can follow a Bible reading plan that just kind of helps us keep moving. And you can also schedule time for prayer. Praying in the Spirit when you are moved, definitely follow the Holy Spirit's prompting, but it's okay to say, well, I'm going to, every night before bed, I'm going to, this is my uh, nightly routine, and part of that is a time of prayer. I have been looking in, in anticipation, and while sort of preparing this sermon series, I've been looking at my own life in ways that I sow seeds, not necessarily to sin, but definitely I sow seeds to sin, so don't let me fool you, but uh, ways that I'm sowing seeds that could be used better in a different way. I brought up YouTube. YouTube is a, a thing for me that will waste hours as I'm driving or laying in bed. I put my earbuds in and listen to nerdy videos talking about glitches and Nintendo code. If, <laughs> it's just it's fascinating. I'll share the playlist with you if you'd like. But that has been my rhythm since I was five. Didn't have YouTube when I was five, but. Since I was a little kid, we, you know, we had TVs in every room and that sort of thing. And I have never, ever, with the exception of like, you know, a state of emergency or that sort of thing, I have never gone to sleep in silence. 
I always had, I always had a TV playing and it'd usually be like a movie that I've seen a hundred times that I could just kind of drift off and, you know, that sort of thing. But I've never had a night's sleep that didn't have input. And so again, part of this, my preparation for the series and thinking about ways that I'm spending my time and attention and resources is that why I decided I'm taking all that stuff off my phone and the way that I am going to be uh, sleeping is I have uh, a, a prayer pattern that I follow uh, at night when I lay in bed. It's not Nintendo glitch videos, which are super entertaining, but, <laughs> but it's becoming a, a, a way that I so into this relationship. I, to stop from being vague, I, I started my life in, in the Catholic Church, and Catholics have a rosary, beads, and if you, probably, if you haven't seen, I've got one on. I'll see if I can pull out. It's just a bunch of beads and all that stuff. And so anyway, I shouldn't say that. Catholics will be offended. But it's beads, and it's a necklace. And so it's uh, uh, each bead on this, around this necklace, and ultimately to this pendant, has a specific prayer tied to it. And so I have modified it for my own uh, desires and my own relationship. And so I have prayers that I pray throughout this uh, rosary, rosary. And I have a a pattern now that I'm trying to sow my time and attention into. And I lay in bed and I have this rosary in my hand and I'm praying through the prayers. I tell you, I was so panicked the first night not to be listening to Nintendo videos or uh, all the other nerdy things that I, <laughs> I listen to. I was so panicked. But I, I, I'm i going to say this is good. I didn't make it the whole way through. Like, I was just out. I passed out saying the rosary in a good way. I slept. Um, and that has been my what I have continued to do then every night since starting this routine is I'll play, pray throughout the day, but this specific pattern that I have... In the evening, and now is a way for me to enter into sleep, to end my day in this relationship. I share a, a space uh, with, with my wife. We have a bed that we sleep in together. And then I share this nighttime routine with my, with my Father in heaven also. And the Lord has been speaking to me in those times and reminding me that it's okay to take some of these seeds that I feel like I want to put here and and continue to spend those, continue to sow those into this relationship with him. And so if you sow into this relationship, uh, God will reward this relationship. It's just the, the, way, the way that it works. And that's ultimately what we talk about when we talk about sowing and reaping is we have a, a promise of a harvest. In our relationship with the Lord, there is always the promise of a harvest. And so we ended with Paul saying, let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will will reap a harvest if we do not give up. You may have heard the saying, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is now. The more I was thinking about this this week, I'm going to undermine my point because it says the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. Probably the second best was 19 years ago. And then maybe, maybe 18 or seven. Right? Uh, but eventually, we're, now we're here. Okay, so now, now what's the... So this is ancient, I think, Chinese, an ancient Chinese proverb that has been around for uh, millennium and centuries. And I'm coming here thinking that I know better. So take everything I say with a grain of salt. But nonetheless, um, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The best time to plant a tree right now with this moment we have is right now. And so it's this idea of doing a little bit every day. Doing a little bit every day is a lot more important than doing something sometime. (laughs) Sowing into this relationship every day, whether it's through uh, a habit of prayer or Bible study, our weekly rhythm of worship here. If it's your drive in the morning where you're praying and you're listening to worship songs. I encourage you to think of the ways that you can be spending, the ways that you can be using these 
limited seeds that you have every day. Every time you take a seed out of your little seed pack there and decide where you're going to put it. I encourage you to lean into the prompting of the Holy Spirit that says, maybe you should pray now. And it can be, yeah, but I really need to do the dishes. And you say, well, maybe you should talk to me while you do the dishes. You can do all of these things. We can do the body and spirit stuff at the same time. A little bit every day. Sowing to this relationship, there's a a promise of a harvest. There's not always a promise of a harvest uh, in other things. So this is my little garden that I started. Uh, It's very sad. In my defense, this is in our backyard. Our backyard faces south. And so it's just like scorching sun all day long. But I didn't spend my resources. I didn't put my time and attention to make sure that this garden had the water that it needed, that maybe it had the the shade that it (laughs) desperately needs. I did get some cucumbers there, and there was I grew carrots, so I did get some, but I didn't get what I could have gotten if I would have listened to one less Nintendo video and then and rather spent my time in prayer pulling weeds. Or spent my time in prayer watering the garden or, again, offering it shade. I didn't get the harvest that I could have because my time and attention was pulled into other directions. My time and attention and my resources were being used for other things. Some of them were noble and good and spiritual deeds, I suppose, but there's a lot of time that I spent not doing this. And so that's the same thing I offer everyone today. We do have things in our life. We have areas in our lives where we could take some of these seeds that we are sowing and sow them to further and flourish this relationship. Because unlike uh, my garden here, and Jesus said the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus has come that we may have life and have it to the full. And not just Later, but now. Life to the full means saying no to the Nintendo video and saying yes to prayer. Life in full says saying no or at least limiting the time I spend watching uh, political things and devoting more of my time uh, to reading the Bible. Uh, Saying no uh, can be spending less of my time uh, uh, on work things and more of my time with my family. Saying yes to growing and sowing seeds in this relationship means that we have access then to this life that Jesus offers us. Jesus again says, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. That life to the full that we are offered now and can live in right now is available to us when we start planting our seeds where the Holy Spirit is prompting us to plant them. It's a life that we have uh, right now. Again, when we turn our time and attention away from the uh, Nintendo video or the seventh hour of politics, in my case, that sort of thing, and turn them ultimately to spending time with the Lord. Jesus offers us opportunities all day, every day on where we're going to spend our our resources, where we're going to sow spiritual seeds. Jesus offers us opportunities every day to, to use our attitudes, to use our words, to use our actions, to sow into this betterment of the kingdom of God. And so... I invite you all to do that. In those times when we know we should have used that seed over here and not uh, for the seventh hour of YouTube, uh, God also offers us this moment of confession. It's a moment where we get to say, uh, Lord, thank you for the time and resources you have blessed me with. And I'm going to have to admit to you now that I did not use them in the most responsible way. I did not use them in a way that honors the trust you put in me, Lord, and that honors the relationship that you and I have. 
And so I invite you now all to join me silently as we confess to the Lord those times when we have not loved each other with our whole heart, those times we have not loved the Lord before us. So if you'll join me now, let's confess silently to the Lord. 